What's up? Welcome to week four of the Owls. Okay, so if you remember last week, I completed my first Owls career and I've moved on to a second one that is easy uh, as well as a s additional certification. So my new Owls career is writer slash journalist and my certification is to become an animagus. I always fuck this up at this point. Yeah, I can turn into animals apparently, I guess, uh, is what I'm getting certified in. So <laughs> starting this, well, at the end of last week, I have finished one of three prompts for journalist writer and I finished one of three prompts for the certification. So I'm now trying to complete the remaining four prompts total. And I will start by explaining what I started reading first, which is If Only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman. This is a book that has been on my TBR cart for like a very long time. I got it from Book of the Month Club, obviously, quite a while ago. And I've put it on countless TBRs and just set it aside for things that I craved more. And you know when you like follow your gut because um, things sound better than another thing and then you finally get to that other thing and you're like, ah, this is why I chose other things. I'm kind of getting that out of this. It is not terrible, but it is not very enthralling either. I'm on page 111 out of too many. 360. Okay. 360. My general feeling of this book, I started it yesterday morning technically, but I didn't read that far. So this morning I read probably another 70 pages. I'm just kind of annoyed with it, honestly. You're hearing it through three different perspectives. One is Lily and one is Jess and they are sisters. And then the third is their mother, Audrey. You're seeing some bits of Audrey in her youth. So the mother, the oldest one, and you're seeing bits of the girls, Lily and Jess, in their youth, but the main story is happening in the now, where both Lily and Jess are adults. They're like 40, early 40s. They have daughters who are both, I believe, 16. They're six weeks apart. They haven't met because the sisters have been estranged since some event happened in their childhood. I believe they were like early teens or preteens when this event happened. We don't know what the event is, but so far 111 pages have consisted of everyone referring to this event that happened, but no one giving any fucking information as to what occurred. I am all right with not knowing something and having it strung along, like dangled in front of us, because we know it's supposed to be big, right? Why else would two sisters never talk to each other for like three decades? But like, I don't need to hear about it every single chapter. It's all that it is about, basically. And like, the mom included always thinks back on this thing. And I have an idea, like, I think I know what it is, but I'm, it could go one of two ways and both aren't like fun. So far, this book is full of trigger warnings and it's a very kind of depressing story because trigger warnings ahead for cancer and miscarriage. Audrey, the mom, is now battling cancer. It's terminal, she is dying, and she's moved in with one of her two daughters, the one that's less well off. One is rich and one is barely surviving um, paycheck to paycheck. She's moving in with the latter. You see her trying to live her life to the fullest with the time she has left, but also she's regretful of her past. And then the sisters keep referencing this like one event that happened and why they hate each other, but they like don't ever say why. And it's affected their relationships currently and it has affected their daughters. But I don't know what the fuck is happening. And my, uh, I'm gonna make a guess. So if it's something that you want to read and you don't want my opinion meddling with yours, I'll put um, like a spoiler thing like I've done in the past right here. So you know that I'm talking about something that might give away theoretically what I assume will happen. And I think that they had an older sister that also died of some kind of disease or illness, maybe even cancer, because they kind of skirt around the, the topic of claiming that Audrey only had two kids. And whenever they reference the, whenever Audrey's thinking of the, the girls in their childhood, she just refers to them as the girls. She never says Lily and Jess. It's always like, and I had this picture of the girls on the beach before everything went wrong, like that kind of thing. So I get the feeling we're gonna find out that they had an older sister who was very sick 
and either one of them ended her life to end the suffering or I don't saw something that happened I don't know it's one of those kind of scenarios where like something unforgivable happened and I do believe it centered around a, an extra character that we won't learn about for a while and the last like the second angle it might go is one about the dad their dad and like you know what it would be if it's something that would break the family apart like a family secret you know I don't really want it to go that direction but also like a finding out about a third sister that was super sick would feel kind of cheap at this point I don't know I'm not loving it right now it's a three star we'll see what happens the writing itself isn't bad she's a, a good writer and I'm like the characters feel distinct and whatnot but like I just don't like how it's a constant string along which is all it's been so far and I'm just like okay can some can you tell us just something about it because I don't want to keep hearing the same like and I thought about this and then I had the nightmare about this again and it's like what is this <laughs> what is this I don't know okay I'm also <laughs> I'm only like a half hour into the audiobook of Clockwork Prince so I can't really comment on what's happening so far. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook for this as I've been doing for the past four books that I've read in the Shadowhunters series. So I've got nothing to say about it yet, but this is what I'm reading. Other than that, that's it. That's what I'm doing for the owls. I'm going to try and rip through if only I could tell you so that I could read something else. It's kind of where I'm at with that. I don't really have any other updates. It's a really gorgeous day out. I might try and get the kids out like on the patio and blow some bubbles and stuff. I also, if anyone is curious, in the previous video, I think week two, I started listening to Wild Girl, Wilder Girls by Rory Powers and I found that I wasn't listening at all so I stopped. I don't really want to call it a DNF because it's not that I didn't like it, just didn't really care about it at the time being so maybe I'll revisit it in the future but as for right now it's just not going to be on my agenda so if you're curious for my updates on that there's your update I return it to the library for now oh how did I forget this I got a package today an unexpected package from the lovely Brianna over at Rainy Days and Stormy Nights. You may recall that we just buddy read Red Sister by Mark Lawrence together and technically I call it our first buddy read but technically we unofficially accidentally buddy read Crescent City House of Earth and Blood together because it like started about a conversation on Instagram about the book and then we realized that we were on the exact same page and then we just kind of continued reading at our own pace but like checking in especially because then Brianna like sat down and read the whole book in a day after at some point so it was just it was a lot of fun to read that with her because I had low expectations going in and I'm not sure if she did as well but we were both very much enjoying it and so then we that's kind of how we got uh, into the the red sister buddy read but Brianna sent me Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend which then just discussed how excited we are for the third book that it had I think it's out this fall. It got pushed back. It was supposed to be out this spring. I can't remember what it is called. It's like Hollow Pox, I believe. And this is the second book in the Morgan Crow series. I have the UK cover of the first one, Nevermore. And if you haven't read it, it is a middle grade, but like think of how Harry Potter feels. I, I always compare it to Harry Potter because it's kind of got the same kind of atmosphere where yes, it's a middle grade, but it doesn't feel super young. It's very immersive. I say that not because I'm trying to degrade middle grades because I don't. I read them and um, they're not always my favorite but I feel like especially on booktube with the older crowd there kind of is like a stigma against middle grade because it like reads young and some of it does but some of it doesn't. Some of it reads like Harry Potter or what else is a good middle grade series that's a little bit. I don't know we'll just leave it at Harry Potter because it's like world known. This is that. So like if you have been hesitant because of the age group that it's lumped into, don't be. Give it a shot. Nevermore and Wondersmith are both fantastic books. Five star reads for me. I absolutely love them and I'm so grateful that Brianna put this book into my collection now. I can't wait for my kids to listen to them someday. We've been trying to work through Harry Potter and they're, they're just a little bit too young. My oldest probably could care and he really does like being read to but I still think because of his learning disability that it might be a little bit above him and then my five-year-old is all over the place and can't sit still so sitting and listening to Harry Potter is a little bit beyond her but someday I can't re wait to read these with them as well and yeah that's it that's my update I'll see you in the next one guys
today's been a day uh, emotionally speaking I'm not doing so great but I haven't really I've been trying to be positive on this channel especially considering you know everything everyone's going through but I'm having one of those days I didn't obviously do my face or anything because I'm just not feeling it and if you follow me on my like BTS stan account or on Twitter or my uh, bookish Instagram you'll see my sister was like super super nice I'm gonna cry again talking about it knew I was going through a hard time um she lives about 15 minutes away from me and she handmade me a card <laughs> Yoongi printout um with a note inside brought me Starbucks and we sat in my lobby apart from each other and talked for a while. Jesus Christ. I feel like my vlogs are like my new diary. I'm sitting here like spilling my soul. My sister's my best friend and um, I miss her a lot. So it was both very nice of her but also unleashed a torrent of tears and I've basically, ooh, I did it again myself. My sister's my best friend. I miss her a lot. Okay. Now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk. Ooh, I'm a mess because I started to, my husband came upstairs to tell the kids they need to finish cleaning their room, which is behind this wall. So I paused because I didn't want you guys to have to listen to everybody fight. <laughs> that said, I am taking some time to like do stuff by myself for me because I haven't had that opportunity in well over a month now. Um, I used to like go to Target or Barnes and Noble like once a week just to have some time to de compress from being a needed mom all the time and so what I've decided to do instead of being productive in like the way of reading or um, studying Korean like I intended to do I'm reorganizing my bookshelf to look the way that I want to because it's kind of been the same since I got these bookcases and it's not really my favorite and I want to feature like my favorites and my taste has kind of adjusted and changed and the way I like buy books and consume books has changed since starting this channel like a year and a half ago and I want to reflect that in my shelves. I will not do like a rainbow shelf or anything. I love the way they look. I just do not have the time and capacity to do that and keep it updated. So I'm just going to do it. I did a bit of a time lapse, but the only thing I've tackled so far is my BTS shelves. I added a second one and then just some minor. We're, we're, we're making, we're making progress. In any case, I'm going to do that. Before that, I want to talk about what I'm reading because it is the owls and this vlog is supposed to be about the owls. And I'm here to say I don't have any of the books except one that I'm going to talk about. They're all downstairs and I don't want to go downstairs and activate my toddler's need for me. I had been reading for muggle studies in order to get my second career journalist slash writer done. If only I could tell you by Hannah Beckerman and at page 150-ish, I'm going to DNF it. In my last clip, I talked about how I probably put it off for a reason at this point. <laughs> and yeah, I did. There are a lot of, lot of trigger warnings. I went through Goodreads to try and find the spoiler for the end. It took a while to find, but I did in the process read a lot of reviews about the story. And it was as I anticipated. And the reason I didn't want to carry on is that it's just a very, very sad book. It's very dramatic as well. Like lots of bad things happen to these three women in their lives. So there are trigger warnings for very visceral and in-depthly written miscarriage. Cancer, suicide, all of these things are in the book. So if you don't want to be spoiled for what happens, and if you skipped my previous clips, guess as to where the story was going, you might want to skip this and I will again put a thing down here. My guess was right. There was an older third sister who was dying of leukemia. The younger sister thought that the older sister had assisted her in suicide and so she has blamed her for the last two or three decades of their lives for killing their older sister which drove their father to kill himself but it ended up being that the mother who is dying of cancer actively was the one who did it to help her oldest daughter out because she didn't want to see her in pain anymore so that that was the story just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of pain more pain more suffering, pain from the past, pain in the present, miscommunication that led to decades worth of a, a estranged relationship. And I am glad I didn't carry on because it wasn't exciting me to read. And I hate that. I hate more 
DNFing a book that isn't gripping than a book that is poorly written. It's well written, but plot wise, it just wasn't for me. And so I grappled with it and I decided I, I'm not going to do it. So what I'm replacing it with is How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper. <laughs> and this book also deals a lot with death. I am probably just over 50% through it. And this is about a guy who works at a company and when he was interviewing for the company he lied to the interviewer and said that he had a wife and kids but he doesn't have either he got the job and then it just carried on and he thought like he could keep up this charade that he has a wife and kids like there's no real reason for his co-workers to find out otherwise but then someone starts working for the company that he has feelings for and she's going through a hard time in her marriage and she believes he's got a wife and kids as well and they become close and their job is like property assessment post death. So there's a lot of death in this and it's talked about very nonchalantly and I'm not really loving it either, but it's not, I'm listening to an audiobook, so it's a little bit easier to consume and it's not as depressing as the, as uh, if only I could tell you. What I will say though, is that it is based solely around this guy's inability to come clean and thus like this affair is happening but it's not an affair on his side it's an affair on this girl's side and so like overall it's not really a very good moral book <laughs> you know and I just um I'm not loving it it's gonna be a three star I can guarantee it unless it really really sucks at the end but I will finish it and that's what matters so it'll be my muggle studies um and I don't hate it but I'm just not it's not gonna make my best of the year, okay? So there's that, that's what I'm replacing with. I uh, started a house with chicken legs this morning and I got 77 pages in. It is a middle grade, so it does read pretty fast. It's very cute, it's about a girl who lives with her grandma because both her parents died when she was a child and she is being prepped to take her grandma's place. It would have been her parents' place as a guardian of shepherding people to their afterlife. So when people die, they come to the grandma and the grandma listens to their stories and then helps guide them through the gate into the afterworld. And she is being, she's 12 and she's being prepped to take her grandma's place. And it's earlier than normal because normally the parents would take the place and then she would take their place. But because the parents are dead, she has to do it sooner. And she being 12, just wants to go out and live her life and have friends and explore and she can't do that. She has to stay on this house with chicken legs that gets up and moves whenever it wants to. It could be three days, it could be three years, but it just gets up and goes and they have to be there in it when it goes and stay there and there's like a the gate around their house that she cannot pass. And she's really grappling with that. I mean, she's 12, she wants to go out. It's a lot of like, you know, you're like, oh my God, girl, just, do what you're supposed to do this would no there'd be no problems but that's like the whole thing of middle grade is that these kids want they, they follow their lust instead of logic because they don't have much logic they're preteens <laughs> so it's very cute so far and i'm excited to see where it goes and that's it that's what i'm reading right now i've downloaded some ebooks that i've read a little bit of pieces of books and so um, none of them are for the owls so i just won't get into them but anyway i'm gonna get back to reorganizing my shelves and then i will um show you the after i suppose so I made a bigger mess than I think that I started with. <laughs> the only thing I'm happy with is that I did this. So now I have more space for my things, my BTS things. I moved all of my favorites, basically. Ninth House isn't really a favorite, but like I really liked it. So uh, to this shelf. I'm leaving space for Lovely War, but I don't know what else to put there, here. I moved my graphic novels and manga down here. I'm calling this the uh, White Men That Write Except for Murakami mini shelf here. And my book of the month came up. 
so that it could be showcased because I like the look of them. And my like favorites but not the best are up here so far. More favorites that are YA. <sighs> Fuck you for sucking. Um, this Sarah J Mass has her own shelf. That's not intentional. I don't know what I'm gonna put here. Some good, decent, good, meh, <laughs> mix. Favorite writer, more white men, I guess. Harry Potter, Death Note alongside this. I couldn't fit it down with the rest of the book, so we're just gonna go with that. I go by author, mostly. Um, and then this is just a mess down here. So like, you can see I have two rows. These are like classics or books that I've had since college or before college that I just don't really care, but also don't want to unhaul. And this, I won't even show you, is just like over stuff. Um, and a lot of my husband's stuff. Ideally, none of this would be on my shelves, but we don't have anywhere else to put it. Same with this. This is all Tolkien and Lovecraft stuff that I don't read. Um, and then we got my TBR cart. So I need to organize that also. These will eventually find homes here. And so I'm okay with the extra space. But I also have this shelf, which is where I put my like red of the month so that I have it organized and set for when I do my wrap ups. And then this is just like a catch all. I've got envelopes for when I ship books to people, a dead old computer, a Sarah J. Mass book that I'm actively reading. <laughs> Um, and then my unhaul pile that I still haven't unhauled and a bunch of crap on the floor. So it's not really um, any better, but like when I film, your view will be mostly of this, which looks, if you just had this view, you would think that I have my shit together and that's what matters. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go do something else now because I'm hot and I'm tired and it doesn't look much better, but it's done. So, okay. Yo, 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 be <laughs> it's been a while it's tuesday i don't know when i last updated friday but i decided to extend this vlog more than a week just because the end of the readathon is the end of the month and the end of the month is thursday so it'd be silly to end it on a tuesday just to go right into the asian readathon which i will also be vlogging so look forward to my vlogs for the next few weeks as well i suppose wherein I'll be reading Asia books by Asian authors. So, what have I been reading? What have I been up to? We're finally at a point where the kids are starting to show clear uh, effects of this quarantine. So we were like on a good path and chugging along and now it's kind of like this more so. So that's why I haven't been updating. And it's really hot now. My house, if in case you haven't been here the past couple of years, the sun sets on the side of the house that has windows and excuse you it gets incredibly incredibly hot from like 11 a.m to the end of the day and i don't do well with these like hot flashy things so spend a lot of time doing nothing which means that i've been listening to a lot of audiobooks so let's get into that i am currently listening to Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. I did continue on with the audiobook because I tried to read it physically, but I kept getting stressed about the other books I prefer to read physically that don't have audiobooks available to me. So I went back to the audiobook. I am enjoying this. I'll keep my summary and my thoughts on this short because I feel like everybody has read this and if you haven't read it, you don't intend to read it yet. But the only thing that's really keeping me from loving it is that I'm not a love triangle fan and I feel like that's something that a lot of people agree with so I'm probably not alone in this but the whole like Tessa and Jem or Tessa and Will thing sometimes I'm really invested in it and I like just like I choose who I prefer her to end up with if anyone at all and then other times I'm like all right <laughs> enough so that's kind of eh. And the plot line is, um, it's, I'm enjoying it. That's, that's where I'm getting. Just like, like the rest of the Shadowhunter books. It's fine. It's good. It's YA fantasy. Cassandra Clare is a good writer and I do like what's going on, but it does feel very long form for the story that's being told. I don't also feel as though the villain of the story is really that clear cut. Like the whole, the whole plot, the clockwork robot. Is that the right word for it? The like autonomy are just, they're not that scary and it's not like a huge point of the plot. It's a lot more about like the 
Tessa dealing with the boys and like who she really is type deal. So it's it's not a five star read for me, but I'm not hating it and um, I'm I'm loving it more than I thought I would. So that's where we're at with this. This will be for oh no, <laughs> did I throw it? I feel like I wouldn't have thrown it out. There it is. An organized mess, as I said in my last Aquarius. What can you do? Okay. So that is for Transfiguration, which is part of my Animagus training. And I had also finished Potions by reading Aquacorn Love by Katie O'Neill. And I'm actively working through a book that I'll talk about in a second, which will complete that training. Then I was also doing the journalist writer as a secondary career. I made some changes to that. So I read Starsight by Brandon Sanderson in my last vlog. And then I had started reading If Only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman and DNF'd it. And replaced it with How Not to Die Alone by Richard Roper and I don't think that I updated having read this. I gave it a three stars but honestly it, it surprised me more than I anticipated it to surprise me. The ending had kind of a twist that explained why I do believe I mentioned this in the last clip that he works for a company and there was like a miscommunication when he was getting interviewed that ended up with him saying that he had a wife and children and then the lie just kept up and now it's years later and everyone at the office thinks he's got this wife Diane and these two kids but he doesn't he lives alone and now there's a woman at the office that he's grown close with and like obviously he's in this state of if I tell her then I've confessed to this lie I've been keeping for years but like I'm falling in love with her type deal it ended up being a lot more than that. The problem is, is that it takes a lot to get to the meat of the story, which if I feel like it was a cheap plot device to get to the end and then reveal why he was the way that he was, it was a lot deeper than it just being this lie that kept up. And I think if I had written it, I would have done it differently. I would have put that in the beginning and had it be this thing he's dealing with throughout the story no one else knows about and then like his moment is revealing it. That would have been a way more fascinating story. And then you only get this like emotional part of the main character Andrew and it, for the last like 10% of the story. So it was a three star, could have been better, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read in my life though and the narrator did a pretty good job. I do like listening to British accents <laughs> and the narrator was British. Oh yeah, three star, this completed my muggle studies for my journal writer career. So then I completed for my history of magic, The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. This is a middle grade like witchy fant fantastical story. It's a very cute story, it didn't keep me fully engaged. I'm having, as you can see right now, I'm having this attention span problem with books if I don't fully love them. If they're not feeling like five star reads, I'm having to tell myself that there's nothing else to do with my free time. Just read another chapter and see where you're at, which sounds bad, but like sometimes I get asked, and people read more than I do, but sometimes I get asked how I read so much in a month and that's it honestly if I have downtime and I'm not just endlessly scrolling my phone which sometimes you just need I'm like why wouldn't I spend the time reading a book I physically or an ebook and that's how I got through this I didn't love it but I also am not the age range intended for it and I think that it does read very much for a middle grader and I gave it four stars because of that in mind so pretty decent if you enjoy middle grade fantastical stories this is a good book okay so that completes my journalist slash writer career, which means that I have completed two careers. And the only things that I'm working on right now are the Transfiguration with Clockwork Prints and the book that I'm excited to tell you about right now, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. So before I put a content warning on here, because this book is about a pandemic and I know that everybody is experiencing this the state of affairs and their mental health very differently. Some people are going to be able to read this or hear me talk about a book that centers around a pandemic and some people aren't and that's perfectly okay. So when I get into the actual meat of the story I will put a warning down here and you can skip ahead till the warning is gone in which case I'll stop talking about pandemic-esque things. But before that I just want to say that I am absolutely loving this book. It's fine for me right now even though my anxiety is high which is probably why I'm having all my stomach issues and stuff. Um, it's not affecting me negatively to read about it. I'm really loving the writing and the way that this is told in two timelines, post and pre the big happening. So I just wanted to say that before you skip ahead if you need to. This is a very good book and if it's something that you can read once we're beyond all of this, I do highly recommend it so far. So that's that content warning. We're about to talk about pandemics.
this pandemic <laughs> is significantly worse than what we're experiencing, but also it's fiction, so our reality feels worse right now. This pandemic is like, they call it the Georgia flu, and when it hits, it hits within hours once you're, you've contacted it, and um, it has a 99.99% .99 mortality rate, and it's fast, like a day. So the patient zero that we see is a man named Arthur, and you watch him die while he's performing a Shakespeare play. He's been an actor his whole life, and he's beyond like the age where people are still giving him jobs, you know, so he is performing this play, and you watch him die of what seems like is a heart attack, but it's this, this flu. So from that point, you're seeing this story in two timelines. 20 years ahead with this traveling symphony, which is a group of people that survived that all play instruments and they are like moving. And when they visit each like town, of which there are a few, they perform Shakespearean plays. They've been doing it for a long, long time. And uh, you're following them and seeing bits of the aftermath of what happened. But you're also going back in time and seeing this actor's life before this flu hit, like how he got into acting and the wives he had. And what's really fascinating to me is that I don't know what the two stories have to do with each other, except that there is a slight character overlap in the first chapter that splits these timelines. But I don't think it's enough that gives it the reason that you're following both these stories. I think there's going to be a much bigger reveal. And that's what I'm really anticipating. I I, I hope if, if the author pulls off something incredible with the reasoning behind this, this will definitely be a five star for me. If it kind of like peters out, which I don't anticipate, then it probably will still be a four star because I'm really, really enjoying it. Enjoying is a weird word to say when you're talking about a pandemic, but I think it's well written and the characters are rich and some of them don't even have names. They're like called Guitar Six and Flute and whatever because they're just this band of musicians and actors that are trying to like be the light and also survive in this time but their like motto is survival isn't enough and stuff like that so i am really really liking it but also it's the end of you know like the end of times basically and all these people are popping up like cult people and prophets saying like we survived this so clearly it was divinity and all the things you'd expect to happen if the world goes in that direction at some point in the future. So anyway, we'll stop talking about the pandemic, but long story short, really am enjoying this. I hope I'm halfway through. It's Tuesday. The month is over on Thursday. Well, Thursday's the last day of the month, I believe. So I do have time. I'll be able to finish this as well as Clockwork Prince. I'll get you updated at the end. We'll go over everything I've done and the careers and all of that. It'll be a big old update and I hope that I can finish those two before then. It'll be like a very incredibly successful reading month in the best owls of the two that I've had. So yay. Okay, that's it. I've got to film my Asian readathon TBR so that video will be up before this video will be up and that's it. I will see you soon. Okay, bye. I've gotten out of the house for one second and I got a golden ginger latte thing. We're gonna try it. Okay, bye. What's up? It is the end of the owls. Today is Thursday the 30th, which means tomorrow is the start of the Asian readathon. So you'll be getting more weekly vlogs from me throughout the whole month. Let's get into something else um, before I wrap up what I read in the owls and talk about the two books that I did complete since my last update, which means that I did complete my certification for journalist writer and, or my career, I guess, for journalist writer and my certification for Animagus, and my original career for Care of Magical Children. So I I read a lot this month. But first and foremost, I do want to say that I got another package from my dear friend Brianna over at Coffee Books and Bullet Journals. I actually, as you saw, went out of the house yesterday. I needed to pick up some prescriptions and car needed gas, and my sister was having a really bad day. If you remember earlier in this week, I was having a really bad day and she surprised me. So I stopped at Starbucks and got her and we safely talked in person from far away. I had my mask on, etc. We did it, you know, the safe pandemic way, I suppose. But that's why I went out, if you wanted to know in the clip. And also update, that drink was not it for me. If you don't like the flavor of ginger that gives you that like um, heat and burn in the back of your throat, then that drink won't be for you. The sweetness doesn't balance it enough. So there's my review on that. I thought I'd like it more. It's a very like hippie drink and turmeric pineapple sounded good, but the ginger I was iffy on and I should have listened to my gut. But anyway, 
on my way back and in uh, taking garbage out. I had an Amazon box, one I wasn't anticipating, and in it, Brianna so kindly sent me Mang, who is another BT21 character. He is J-Hope's character. So now I have one more to add to my collection. Hang it up there for now. And a book, of course, because we're book people. And that is Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowen. And the thing about this is I was thinking, like, I'll save it for a contemporary a -thon, but she, I have to look it up, I am like... I'm gonna go with 50% sure that she is of Asian heritage. So if that is the case, I'm gonna try and fit it in next month. Um, it's a YA contemporary, so I think that I could do that. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure. I guess you'll find out next month. I'd look it up, but I film on my phone. <laughs> okay, so thank you again, Brianna. Um, I'm. This is like one of the most beautiful book covers I've ever seen. It's stunning. Her other book, Starfish, is also stunning. It's purples instead of blues with a starfish on it. Um, it might be a jellyfish as well. Regardless, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous covers. Thank you so much. Okay. So literally about five minutes ago, I finished Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare. And I actually really liked it. It's gonna be a very strong four star for me. The thing that really, really like sealed the deal for me, and for those of you that have read it, you'll know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to be very vague, is that there is like a twist in near the end that um, has to do with something that a character has believed their whole life and has found out otherwise. And that to me is such a game changer in the storyline of this trilogy and um, throw such a wrench in the personal plot lines that have been growing and I just really really liked it. I didn't anticipate it. I don't think I was really thinking beyond what the character believed in the first place so I didn't see it coming and I really liked it. I'm not really digging one aspect of how our main character Tessa is feeling and acting in regards to a relationship she has with someone in the second half of the book. I feel like feelings are definitely going to get hurt in the third book, but I enjoyed it. Also, we did get, I complained earlier, we did get, we weren't getting enough of like the villain and like that aspect of it, but it ended kind of nicely in that sense. We got a little bit more of that. I just want to see more. So I'm hoping that the final one, which is, what's it called? This. Oh, <laughs> I keep being like, it's Clockwork Prince up there and looking at this and looking at that. It's Clockwork Princess. I'm done. All right, so that's it. This was for Transfiguration, which is part of the certification for Animagus. And <laughs> so four stars. This book. I won't talk more about the plot because of its content. And at this point, you know, it's a story about a pandemic and the aftermath. And so I'll just kind of summarize my feelings at the end. I really, really did enjoy this. This is a five star read for me. The end reveal was where I thought it was going and I liked it. Uh, and I think it worked out well. There were things that happened in the end that I didn't anticipate nor expect. And I think that it worked beautifully. I would categorize this as a character driven book, which as we know, is one of my favorite things. Like I prefer to read a story that is driven forward a lot by the characters and I'm the plot is secondary to me in most of my favorite books I should say and I think that that's what I really loved about this because obviously the plot is very you know what it is it's the pandemic and people are dead and the ones that are surviving are trying to live in a society wherein everything they've known previously is no longer so it's the people you care about the people and the stories of the people and the things that they're going through and the the relationships they're creating and how they're growing and you're following them and you care about them, both the past story and the present, because this is told in two storylines, as I've said before. And I just really, really, really enjoyed it. I instantly put Emily St. John Mandel's newest book on my wish list so that I can get it at some point in the future because I'm sold on her writing. So yeah, five star. I ended, technically I just finished Clockwork Prince, which means I ended on a four star, which is still great. But I finished this this morning, so what a great way to end the Owl's Readathon. I finished with a five and a four star read, and that means that I read, well, for the actual readathon, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That doesn't really make sense, mathematically speaking, so I can't really tell you why it's off so much because I've read 17 books this month, but only 14 prompts, and I can account for two books that I read that had nothing to do with the Owls. Regardless, <laughs> Thanks for being here with such a successful Owls. Let me know down below if you participated and if you successfully completed your career or any additional things that you did, certifications, additional careers, etc. 
uh, what was your favorite book of this month what was your least favorite book of this month that's it i it was i always look forward to the owls and i look forward again to the newts in the fall it's just such a fun reading experience because it's so so many people in the community do partake. I love just that feeling and watching other people's vlogs and seeing what career paths they've chosen. I just love when everyone comes together as a reading community and talks about their favorite thing, books. So that said, that's it for me. I've completed The Owls and May. I've got some like personal goals and re obviously my reading goals. And I'm gonna take you along on the journey. <laughs> so stay tuned. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope April treated you as well as it could, considering the circumstances and that May is even better. The sun's out more if you're at least in my part of the world. Hopefully we can all get outside a little bit more and get some vitamin D and be happy. <laughs> all right, like if you like this video, subscribe if you are new here and would like to see more content from me. I post all my social media links down below. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads. I appreciate your time and energy and the discussions we have below. So talk about anything. I will talk back. All right, guys. See you in the next one. Bye.